May the promise of Easter blessings be upon you, friends. Thank you for joining us today in prayer. It's Tuesday of the second week of Easter. We're so glad you're with us. I'm Father Ron. This is the God Minute. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord has risen. The Lord has risen indeed. Alleluia. Psalm 51 How do truly good people live? They speak the truth from their hearts, have no hidden agendas, are loyal friends. They offer respect to their neighbors, but avoid the company of the selfish and the foolish. They honor good people wherever they find them. They live to do good, keep their word, make their living with honest work, and give generously from their abundance. Their way of life makes them strong in heart. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, Chapter 4 verses 32 and 33. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. There is no doubt Jesus' presence changed the world for the better. Even 2,000 years later, people still talk about him, believe in him, follow him, try to emulate him. We study his words and analyze his actions. It seems we owe a debt of gratitude to those early Christians who, guided by the Holy Spirit, just couldn't stop talking about him. They were the first witnesses to the resurrection, and they couldn't keep it to themselves. I'm challenged by the early believers sometimes. I wonder if I had been there at that time, would I have recognized Jesus as Lord? Surely, if I witnessed a miracle, I would have believed in him, right? Would I have been found sitting on a hillside or the lake shore listening to him preach? I highly doubt I would have been one of those in the crowd as he carried the cross. I probably would have been one of those who ran far away from that scene and hid. What if I hadn't been right there during the lifetime of Jesus? What if I only heard the stories from someone else who was there? How long would it have taken me to join the community of believers, I wonder? If I wasn't born into a Christian family, would I have chosen it? During Holy Week this year, and even in these early days of the Easter season, I've been trying to put myself into the story, imagining what role I would have played if I had been born at a different time, in a different place. I can only speculate what my response would have been. You see, I was born into a Catholic family and raised in a community of believers. I've never been anything else. Is the community of believers to which I belong, of one heart and one mind? Sometimes I worry that we are not. I wonder how we would compare to those early Christians What does it really mean to be of one heart and one mind? Do you suppose it means they all agreed on everything? That sounds impossible to me. Could it be that the early Christians agreed on what mattered most, 
Things like loving one another and loving God, believing in Jesus and following his teachings. In another 2,000 years from now, what might people looking back think about us? Would anyone looking at us describe us as being of one heart and one mind? To me, at times, it feels like an overwhelming amount of conflict and differing opinions in the world today. Doesn't seem like we agree on much. It wasn't all great for the early Christians, you know. Their world, like ours, was not perfect and their lives were not easy. But just like them, we too can find hope in the resurrection, in the promises of the risen Christ. We can bear witness by our words and actions. We can continue to spread the good news in our own way, in this, our time. It's our turn to keep the story alive. reflection. Thank you, Peggy. That idea, can we disagree and still be unified? Unity. Let's pray for that today, along with all our own intentions, as we pray the great prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, I praise you for your power, your presence and purpose in my life. I confess my unbelief and unwillingness to press on when hope seems dead. O oh Lord, please pour your Spirit afresh upon me. May your resurrecting power shine forth in my life and the lives of my loved ones. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And And with your spirit. spirit. May the abundance of God's blessing protect you and keep you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That does it for us this Easter Tuesday. Blessings and surprises from the Lord be upon you this day, friends. We'll see you tomorrow.